Hey guys, how's it going? Hope everybody is doing well out there. Uh, in today's video, I wanna show a Docker container called Snapdrop to make file sharing even easier. But first, a message from today's video sponsor. YourCDKey.com is a great place to get Windows 10 keys at incredibly low prices. So here we are on the Microsoft Windows 10 Pro page, and right here you can see the current price is $20.05. But if you use the coupon code that's in the description down below, you'll get it even cheaper. So I'm going to go ahead and paste that in here and click apply. And now our new total for Windows 10 Pro is about 15 bucks. Now I have the option to go ahead and view the keys right here. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. Then I'll click on get the key. And then I'm going to come over here and right there you can change the product key. So go ahead and click on that. I'm going to go ahead and change the product key right here. So I've entered my key and I'll click next. Then I'll click on activate. And here we can see that Windows is activated. Next, what we wanna do is go ahead and validate the key installation. And right there, you can see the Windows 10 Professional Edition is permanently activated. So head on over to yourcdkey.com to get your next Windows 10 Pro key at ridiculously low prices. Okay, so here we are on my desktop. Uh, this is actually gonna be kind of a weird video because uh, I'm actually recording two desktops simultaneously, uh, sort of, uh, let me rephrase that. I'm recording two different screens simultaneously on the same desktop, sort of. Um, uh, on the top screen up here, this is actually uh, well, my top monitor, but uh, this is actually uh, a Windows 10 VM on a separate machine so that I can actually show this thing working. And then on the bottom, I'm showing my ultra wide uh, monitor here where I've got two windows side by side on the same local machine, uh, one in Chrome, one in Edge, uh, all on the same URL. And you can see that uh, each of these screens has uh, basically two computer icons in the middle. Um, and then across the bottom, you'll, you'll notice that it says as you are known as uh, in the top screen white goldfish on the bottom left we've got tan tortoise and on the bottom right we've got lavender meerkat and those are just all random identifiers for each of the different uh, clients or people connected to uh, the instance in this particular moment so that's you, you don't actually get to set at least with a basic setup uh, you don't actually get to set your your screen name uh, it's just kind of whatever uh, the system picks for you when you access this page so <clears throat> basically uh, what, we, what we can see here if we take a look at this top screen uh, is that um, like if I wanted to send a file to uh, Lavender Meerkat, we can see that that is the Windows Chrome browser there. So if I click that, I give this a second to open up, uh, then I can pick you know, just any of these files that I've got available. Uh, this is, again, this is VM, not much on here other than some files from some previous testing. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. And then immediately you can see uh, on the on the Chrome window on, on that bottom area uh, that the file has been received. And I've got a couple of options. I can either ignore it or save it. So let's go ahead and just save it like so. And there we go. Now the file has been downloaded and we can see that file. <clears throat> so. Pretty straightforward in how this thing works. Um, of course, I could, <clears throat> um, you know, like White Goldfish uh, is is that VM. Uh, let's actually come over here to uh, to Tan Tortoise and send something to White Goldfish. Uh, that same basic way there. Uh, we'll just go ahead and click on that. There it is again, and it actually shows the animation in the GIF file. Uh, so again, I can save or ignore. Uh, I'm just gonna ignore that one. We don't actually need to download that one again. Now, there's one other quick thing that I wanna show here um, that kind of makes this a bit more useful, I think. Um, <clears throat> if we, uh, on, on any of these different browser windows, we can right click one of uh, the attached devices here, whether it's Lavender Meerkat or Tan Tortoise or even White Goldfish, if I was on a different machine here, I can right click that and I can actually send a message to that user. Like, hey, uh, this is a uh, demo message. And then I can click send and there it is. Um, Tan Tortoise got that message uh, as they would have expected to have gotten it. So uh, a couple of quick things here. Uh, I tested this using, uh, you know, just my local uh, IP addresses and things like that. And I had a real hard time getting things, different machines to connect to each other. Uh, that could be the security through Ubiquity. I haven't actually dug into it that much, but I did find the workaround that worked for me was actually attaching this to a domain name uh, and then running it through a reverse proxy. If you've seen my other videos, 
you'll know that I use Cloudflare. Well, first, I use Porkbun for all of my domain names. In fact, if you go down to the description below, uh, there will be a coupon down there where you can pick up uh, up to three dot click domains for like 99 cents a piece. That's per customer, per account, whatever. There are some limitations to that. But just go ahead and check that out if you want to get a new domain uh, to set this up. Uh, also, I like I said, so I use Porkbun for my domains. I use Cloudflare uh, for DNS, um, internet-facing SSLs, uh, DDoS protection, IP obfuscation, I use Cloudflare for everything. So uh, I will be using that. And then <clears throat> on the local side of things, I will be using Nginx Proxy Manager uh, on, on a different device. Uh, and of course, for that to work, you will need to have ports 80 and 443 uh, forwarded from your, your modem and router to uh, wherever your Nginx Proxy Manager reverse proxy is set up. So uh, that's kind of some of the prerequisites that I'm gonna have for my video to get things working properly. So let's, now that we've kind of, kind of covered all of the technical stuff, let's jump over and show you how to get this thing installed. Okay, so here I am. I'm on my Portainer screen uh, for the machine that I've got this installed on. I'm gonna go ahead and just get logged in. Uh, and then over here, if I click this, we'll see uh, that I've got my containers here. And right there is Snapdrop. Uh, I can jump in here to take a look uh, at the logs. Uh, it doesn't really seem to keep logs of any of the files that are being transmitted back and forth. So that that's up to you as far as what you feel as far as security is concerned. Um, <clears throat> But of course, we can come in here and we can take a look at all of the different uh, things here for as far as like uh, resources. Oops, let's actually change that to one second. Uh, so this would be, uh, you know, resources that are being used for memory, CPU, uh, network, IO, things like that. Uh, this is all very standard portainer stuff. Uh, so I'm not showing you anything you haven't seen there. Uh, but here we can see that I've got it on port 84 uh, for uh, for HTTP and then port 6443 for HTTPS. Um, so that's kind of what's going on there. Uh, if we jump over here to stacks, we can see that I've got a snap drop right there. And unfortunately, I deployed this using, um, uh, using command lines. So uh, what we're going to do then is actually go ahead and take a look at that. Uh, so we're going to do, oops, let's, let's do it the right way. You guys yelled at me for so very, very long uh, to use this. So I'm going to do SSH. Uh, root at 192.168.1.183, like so. That's the, the IP address of that machine. I'll get logged in, I'll do an LS. Let's do, oops, CD slash home. There we go. So now I can do an LS. Uh, you can see I've actually, a CD rather. You can see I've got snap dop and snap drop. I don't know what my reasons are for that, but that's what I did. So I'm gonna do snap drop and we'll do an LS. And right there you can see there's the Docker Compose. Uh, so we'll do a nano oops, uh, docker compose.yml. And there's really nothing in here that, that made me do it this way. Uh, it's just kind of what, what I felt like doing that day. If you wanted to do this uh, via command line, you absolutely could. Um, or you could do this via portainer. Uh, you could, like I said, you, you could just grab this like so. Uh, come over to stacks, click add a new stack, paste that in there. Uh, we're going to call this snap drop. Uh, we'll call this strapped up. Snap drop demo, I could uh, talk here. Now there, there is one thing I wanna say here, this network mode bridge, that was me testing something. Uh, in fact, I believe that's why I ended up switching over to uh, command line is I wanted to test something. Uh, you don't need that, that was, I was trying to get the local thing to work and it just didn't. So uh, what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna change these ports. I'm gonna change this to 85 and 6543, uh, just so that there are some differences here. Um, so let's actually go back up to the top and start this. So version 2.1, volumes will be snap drop. Uh, I'm gonna call this snap drop uh, demo. Uh, so that'll be the volume. I actually wanna change that, oops, uh, down here. So uh, below that, we've got our services of snap drop. Uh, image will be the Linux server snap drop image. That's just how we like to do things here. The container name, uh, because we're doing this via portainer, we don't actually need the container name, but uh, let's keep things consistent. Now, the, the PUID and PGID, uh, we talk about this a lot, but uh, we're going to talk about it again. So um, <clears throat> for this to work, what we're going to in order to get these numbers, I, I'm already uh, SSH uh, into my server. So in order to get the PUID and PGID, I'm just going to type an ID. And then in this case, because I've got uh, Open Media Vault uh, set up on this, that will be the username uh, that I will end up using. Uh, for, for this ID. So I'll just do uh, admin. And right there, you can see um, that it is a uh, UID is 98, GID is 100. If you were doing this like on a Synology device, for instance, uh, you would put in whatever your Synology username is rather than admin there and get the same end result, just different numbers. So that's where I got 998 and 100 uh, right here. 
My time zone, I'm close to Denver, so that's that's what I went with. My volumes, we just changed this. You can map this if you want a this to go to a specific file or, or folder or whatever. I'm just doing a volume here. That is completely up to you on how you want to run that. Um, and then, like I said, uh, port 85 and 6543, um, you can map those however you'd like, as long as you only map the first half of each of these. Uh, the second half, leave those alone. Uh, those need to be there for a reason. <clears throat> So below that, we've got restart list stopped. A uh, pretty straightforward container here, all things considered. So uh, what we're gonna do, now that we've got that, we're just gonna scroll down, click on deploy the container. We'll give this just a second to do its thing. And there we go. Now we have snap drop demo right there. So again, we can see uh, that our ports look good. Uh, everything looks like it's up and running. Uh, we're listening on port 3000, so that's good. Uh, also note that uh, this does have two sets of ports because it does have a self-signed certificate. So uh, you could do uh, an SSL thing here uh, as long as you trust your own self-signed certificates. However, we're gonna play into that just a little bit in a moment. So um, b basically at this point, everything should work. Uh, if I open, oh, because it tried to take me over to HTTP. So here we go, now we've got uh, we've got this. So let's open this up in a new tab uh, over here, like so. So right now it's working. Uh, if, uh, again, I tried this uh, uh, the other day and it didn't. So let's do this one more time uh, over here. Okay, so everything appears to be working. Let's try this just real quick. Uh, let's just do that. File received. Let's go ahead and save that. Cool. Looks like everything is working the way we want it to. Oh, you know what? I lied. This is actually, these are all on the same local machine. Uh, let's change this to 192.168.1. Oops. 192.168.1.183. I'm going to put that on port 85 instead. And here we go. Now it says open Snapdrop on other devices. So this is the problem that I ran into before, uh, where even though I've got this open in other windows, uh, it just doesn't seem to want to work um, on other devices on the network. So the way we're going to fix that is by going over to Cloudflare. Uh, we're going to set up a new CNAME record for a domain name, and then we're going to point it to here. Then we're going to get our domain name set up on the local network, and then everything should work just like we want it to do. So let's go ahead and do that next. So let's go over to Cloudflare. Okay, so here we are, we're logged into Cloudflare. Uh, we're taking a look at my dbtech.click domain. Again, get your own .click domains uh, using the link in the description down below. Uh, so I'm just going to, uh, I've already got this set up pointing to my home server. So what I'm gonna do is add a new record. Uh, I'm gonna come down here to CNAME. Uh, for this, I'm gonna call this just um, SNPDRP um, and do that. So then this will be the domain name that we will access this on later. Now, the next thing we wanna do, uh, like you can see, I put the at in there for the target. That just points it to the root domain. Uh, we're gonna turn proxy status off so that we're DNS only for the moment. And then right there, now we're good to go. So let's go over to my gatekeeper account. Let's turn that on. <clears throat> all right, so here we've got my proxied uh, all the stuff that I've got uh, pointed to my servers. So what I'll do is add a new proxy host. I'm gonna go ahead and paint that or paste that in there. For this one, I'm gonna select HTTPS because we have the option to use a self-signed certificate locally. So that's what we're gonna do. Um, so we're gonna do uh, 19, oops, 192.168.1.183. And this was 6543, I believe. Let's double check that. 6543, that's correct. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and do block common exploits. This time, we also wanna make sure that WebSocket support is enabled. Uh, that's super important. Uh, next, um, if you wanted to, you could actually set this up so that you would have to have a username and password uh, to access any of this. If you wanted to add a little extra level of security uh, by creating custom access lists. Uh, here you can see I've got one set up already. Um, but you could set up an access list to only to make sure that people could only access it if their IP address is authenticated uh, or they've got a username and password they can authenticate with. Either way, uh, you can do it that way. Uh, next, we'll go over here to SSL. Uh, maybe there we go. And then we'll click on request. We're going to force. It doesn't matter. We're going to come back and check those anyway. Um, so we're going to go ahead and click on save. Give this just a second here. Oh, huh. it helps if you do that. Now we can select that and click save. There we go. I, it, it didn't give me an error message and I wasn't paying attention. All right, what, what, what happened? Okay, let's try something different here. For some reason that just doesn't want to work. All right, let's do this. We're gonna add a certificate. 
let's encrypt we snap snap dot db tech dot click like so Okay, I don't know why that didn't work, but we're, we're good to go now. So uh, we have that available. So let's go back over here to our hosts, proxy host. We're gonna add a new proxy host. We're gonna do a uh, snap.dbtech.click like so. We're gonna make this HTTPS 6543, block common exploits, WebSocket support, SSL. We're going to select that. Uh, we're gonna do that and we'll click save. All right. So here is uh, the, the one that we've created. We're gonna go ahead and open that up. We've got snap.dbtech.click. Now, what we wanna do before we do anything else is come back over to here and make sure that we switch this from DNS uh, to proxied like so, uh, just to help obfuscate our IP address for our home uh, IP address. So that's all we're doing that for. Um, and also we'll get D DDoS protection, all kinds of other stuff uh, when, we've got, uh, when we've got everything enabled. So at this point, we're good to go. Uh, so let's go ahead and refresh that. Um, so that's good. Now let's go over to uh, our Windows 10 uh, install over here. So we're going to say HTTPS, oops, snap.dbtech.click. Okay, so I've got Fuchsia hair over here. Uh, and there we go. So I'm known as Fuchsia hair. Uh, the other one is known as Gold Heron. Uh, so let's come back over. Uh, those seem to line up pretty well there. So uh, let's come over here and let's send that file right there. It is, it's sending. So we can click save and there we go. So there is a, a quick and easy way to share files with friends or or whatever, however you wanna set up your, your network sharing or your uh, your sharing system here using Snapdrop. Very cool little uh, application. Uh, I really dig how easy it is to set up and use. Uh, also, I, I love being able to access it from the internet. Also, big shout out to uh, Porkbun for uh, hooking you guys up with the coupon codes uh, so where you can get your own dot .click domains. Um, so I think that kind of wraps up everything that I wanted to share in this video, but I'd love to know what you guys think about this in the comment section down below, or if there are other uh, containers or applications or projects or whatever you guys would like to see, definitely let me know that in the comment section down below as well. Also, be sure to go check out the description down below for links to everything uh, that I showed in this video for sponsor spots and, and, and all of the container stuff. Everything will be in the description down below, so definitely check that out. Also wanna give a big shout out to my patrons, my channel members, you guys rock. Thank you so much for your continued support. Really do appreciate it. Uh, but I think with all that being said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. As always, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support. And I'll talk to you in the next video.